Welcome to Profit Boss Radio. I'm your host, Hillary Hendershot, certified financial planner and owner of every money mistake you can imagine. I now run a successful financial planning and wealth coaching firm. I'm here to share with you what I learned turning failure into financial freedom. Profit Boss Radio is all about how women like us are authoring our own lives, rewriting the rule book of money and running incredible businesses. If you like this show, hit subscribe, share it with a friend and leave us that five-star review. Are you ready, Profit Boss? Let's do this. Hey, it's Hillary Hendershot. Real quick before we get to the show, I want to share how you can get my comprehensive and virtual wealth coaching course for business owners. Since I started sharing how I multiplied my wealth from more than $500,000 in debt to accumulating over eight figures in wealth through neuroplasticity, changing my brain about money, lots of you have been reaching out to find out how you can do that too. So this podcast is loaded with lots of great financial advice from both myself and my guests, but I'll confess, Profit Boss Radio isn't intended to be a comprehensive or done for you system. That's why I decided to create the money blueprint for business owners. If you want one-on-one access to me, plus all my strategies for learning to command and manifest money, plus your own personalized plan for your business and personal finances, conveniently packaged up into a one-year transformational course, visit hillaryhendershot.com forward slash MBP. The link's in the show notes for all the details. What? We are back. Welcome to episode 174 of Profit Boss Radio. I am Hillary Hendershot. This is your virtual wealth mastermind. I'm your profit mentor, your wealth champion. You're in the right place if working so hard seems to come easy for you, but money still seems a little bit elusive. There are so many shows about business and marketing and all the freedoms that are supposed to come along with being your own boss. But this show, this show, Profit Boss Radio, right here, I am showing you how to keep it for yourself. All that hard work, all those business revenues, you got to learn to keep them for yourself. And that is what we're up to here. Wow, I can't believe we're back. I've been off the air for almost six months. It feels so good. I have missed you. And if you're listening to this, thank you for staying subscribed. I am so happy to be back. And of course, I'm going to share with you today why I've been off the air for six months. Frankly, because it's cheaper for you to learn from other people's lessons than to have to make them yourself. You know, it's no secret that I've made big mistakes and learned big lessons in my life. The origin story of this podcast is one of the bigger mistakes I made in my life, really the biggest lesson I had to learn. And that was the rules of money. I very nearly financially ruined myself. I mean, truly, I did financially ruin myself. I had six figures of debt. I had a leased BMW convertible that I had absolutely no ownership in. I had a mortgage where the principal balance went up every month. I was a financial train wreck and I was a financial train wreck who graduated from college with a degree in economics with barely nearly a 4.0 GPA. No joke. Phi Beta Kappa, Honor Society, Silver Key, the whole thing. I got good jobs. I just refused to hold on to my money. Finally, I got so sick of having financial emergencies. I was like embarrassed and ashamed And I was always asking for loans and paying credit card interest. And I really just decided to shed all of those habits and mindsets of the past. I pulled myself up by my bootstraps, got really committed to financial success. I worked my butt off to reverse my results. I paid off the debts. I really became a connoisseur of profit. I worked hard to build my business. And here we are. I am now financially independent, which means... I work because I want to, not because I have to. All that is to say that I deserve to be your wealth mentor. I decided along the way to give away what I learned, to systematize it, to make it learnable, downloadable, teachable, and I did that. So if money isn't intuitive for you, I got you. If the language of Wall Street isn't understandable to you, I get you. If the idea of investing for compound returns is intimidating to you, I hear you and I can help. These are the topics we cover on Profit Boss Radio. We're also going to be talking about profitable ways to run a business more and more on this show because it turns out I'm pretty good at that too. 
first, let me just say that it's been hard to be off the air for six months. Last year, the coronavirus pandemic began in March. It was emotionally hard for all of us. I happen to manage a wealth management firm where we manage our clients' investments. So those suffered briefly and we needed to put our attention on those clients to make sure that they were emotionally and fiscally all right. I'm proud to say that everyone has survived and thrived since then, that our client accounts have been up between 50 and 55% since then, pretty significantly. Since then, of course, in the US, it's been a time of particular negative energy for so many of us. It's been really hard. However, I really had something sort of brewing in my business that was bound to take me out regardless. And here's what it was. So first, I've been so blessed that many of you have hired us to work with you, whether that be as your comprehensive wealth management team or as your money coach in your business. And our loyalties are to you first, to our clients. And when the rubber meets the road, as business increases, so do the obligations on my time. And I I just didn't hire team members in time to do both, to continue to prep and air podcast episodes and also service the high level of business we brought in. You know, it's a good problem to have. It frankly became quite painful. My calendar started to look pretty consumed and my calendar isn't a two-dimensional thing outside me that's not attached to me, you know, and neither is yours. My calendar is how I use my time, which is my life. So there's almost no white space on my calendar. I'm sacrificing personal commitments and peace of mind. I'm like starting to get pretty unhappy. I'm sacrificing time with my family for work. And I had brought in so much business that I did that for nearly a year. And I'm just being honest. I was pretty unhappy about that. I dropped the podcast for a while, frankly, because I had to, because it was the situation I created. And when I really looked what's really going on, when I got miserable enough about it that I was willing to look honestly and insightfully, you know, I had the experience that the world was doing it to me for a while. And that is really false thinking. And I've taught that on this show before, but even I am subject to it. You know, so much of business ownership is personal growth or business growth is personal growth. It's just interesting to me how you can teach something and know it at your current level but that when the world or your business calls for you to expand into a new level, you can forget the same things that you taught. (laughs) And so I looked really insightfully and honestly at the limiting beliefs that got me to where I was. And what I saw was I was attached to the money. You know, I didn't want to spend money on staff. So in a way, being attached to profit really hurt me because see, your business is a hungry entity. It is an entity that's separate from yourself. And just like your car eats gas, your business eats one of two things, money or time. And that could be the time of your team, your staff, your employees. But until you design it with enough standard operating procedures so that the business can run without you, it's it's a lot of your time, right? So there's this push-pull. It's like a seesaw. The business either eats time and money. And I had gotten unwilling to give the business more money, more of my money in the form of hiring people. So again, it was a problem that I really created. And there were a number of things that led me to this limiting belief. And I'm hoping you're seeing yourself in this, okay? One, there's a person in my industry, he's an expert. He's absolutely prolific. And he's a thought leader in my industry. He publishes excessively. He says that firms above my firm's current size, which it has grown to pretty quickly, tend to not get more profitable. So I had internalized that. I read it. I believed it like a rule and I internalized it. Okay. I can't get much bigger. Two is I have this thing that I will say to anyone who will listen, which is that I'd rather work with clients than mentor staff. Actually, what I'm really afraid of is what I call an HR problem. And I think you know what I mean. Right now, my team is lean. I know that phrase is lean and mean, but my team is lean and kind and lovely. And we work really well together. And I just don't want to run a big organization that starts to get inefficient. Like I enjoy the efficiencies of the way my team works together now, but it turned into a very limiting belief. And I ultimately did have to give it up. And the third strongly held 
opinion or, or mindset that led me to this problem was, as you know, I run a wealth coaching program for business owners and I was attached to it being offered in cohorts that start and finish together. And this kind of program becomes impossible to scale because I have to lead everything and I have to do the one-on-one coaching. And what I really got is that if I want to make a million women millionaires and men, you can come along too, but that if I didn't redesign my thinking, I was only going to be able to impact about 80 people a year and that I was going to be working as hard as I could possibly work to do that. So I had all these limiting mindsets acting like truths, like rules in my brain. And I hope you're starting to see some of your own limiting beliefs at play in this conversation. And ultimately, I had to give it all up. I have hired more staff than I've ever employed before. I do believe that we've redesigned how the team works, that we have people that saying goes the right butts in seats now. And what I see now is that I was attached to paying myself a high wage because I talk about and teach how business owners should pay themselves a high wage everywhere I go. And I didn't want to be a hypocrite. I wanted to be a leader of leaders. Warren Buffett said, when the tide goes out, you can tell who's been swimming with no shorts on. I wanted some shorts on people. And frankly, because I want to earn a high wage. I mean, I enjoy it and it's fun for me. It makes me feel well compensated for my hard work. It's a measure of how much value I'm providing. It's something that makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing in the world. I'm fulfilling on my vision and that the world, the universe is compensating me well for that. And even though, you know, I've asked you on this podcast not to see wealth as a zero sum game, I was seeing my business revenues as a zero sum game. You know, that thought leader in my industry had me convinced my profitability was capped out So I thought if I hire more people, it's just going to come out of my personal bank account. I mean, not literally, but it means less revenue, less profit, and therefore less wage to me, which affects my personal bank account. But you know what? That thought leader doesn't know me and he doesn't know my business. And unlike most wealth managers, we do offer a program that's scalable. So we are different. And scale is where leverage comes in. And I just decided, you know what? I'm going to make this thing a runaway success. And it's actually easier to pay yourself a high wage if your revenues are higher because your wage is a lower percentage of that. So I really got that I needed to take my own coaching and that no matter what level you reach as an entrepreneur, you are not subject or not not subject to your own limited thinking. Like I said, it's just amazing to me how much of business growth is personal growth. Every time it hits me in reality, in the reality... <laughs> it kind of gobsmacks me. Hillary here with a quick timeout to tell you how we can work together to improve and even make your financial life 100% organized and hassle-free. As a listener, you probably know my story. I made every money mistake in the book until I finally figured out the power of learning how to change my brain, including my beliefs about money. This allowed me to multiply my wealth to over eight figures. And since then, I've created a done-for-you comprehensive course to teach other business owners exactly how I did it. I've also been a wealth and financial advisor to women and couples for more than 20 years now. If you think we may be a great fit to work together, go to hillaryhendershot.com and just start a conversation. We provide fee-only fiduciary advice to our clients, which means our clients never ever pay commissions. And we do only what's in your best interest, just like it's supposed to be for all financial advisors. If you want to see how my team and I measure up as financial advisors, check out our Yelp reviews at hillaryhendershot.com forward slash Yelp. All right, let's get back to the show. So let's review the seven steps to wealth. And then I want to talk to you about something that's been in the news lately. So I have this seven step money blueprint that I've been using and talking about on this show for the history of the show. And essentially what I did was after I transformed my own financial life, I looked back and I isolated the key beliefs, practices, and realities that had to be in place in my life. And of course, I was acting as a wealth manager. So I have insight into many people's financial lives. So I know what has to be in place in order for people's financial life to be thriving. And most people, all they talk about is one of these steps to wealth, which is number four, earn. So I'm not giving up the farm here. We'll talk about all seven. But it's no surprise to me that if all you're talking about is earning money, 
that your financial life will probably still continue to be a mess or it'll be hit and miss or it'll be volatile because you're not managing everything you need to manage. So let's talk about the seven step money blueprint. First is decide. This is your mindset. You know, in all of the most significant aspects of your life, you have to decide to have that aspect work for you. You know, the aspect of career is separate from money. They're interrelated. But of course, if you don't decide to have a successful, fulfilling career, you're not going to. You have to pursue that. You have to construct it. You have to design it. You have to have mentors and you have to have tough conversations. You have to make phone calls you don't want to make and you have to call people out on things you don't want to call them out on. And you have to brand yourself as someone in a member of that career. And these are all artifacts of the decision to have a successful career, having a successful marriage. You have to be willing to be loyal and humble yourself and to be empathetic and compassionate when your ego doesn't want you to. These are all artifacts of the decision to have a happy marriage. So there are artifacts of the decision to have a lucrative, opulent financial life. And I can't name for you all the indicators of wanting to have a successful financial life, but like, are you willing to say, I'm committed to financial freedom? I'm going to do what it takes to get to financial independence. I'm earning $100,000 a year now. What is it going to take for me to earn $150,000? I'm earning $150,000 a year now. What is it going to take for me to earn $300,000? Like, those are the kinds of What is it going to take? How do I need to design? What conversations do I need to have? That's the kind of conversation or activities that you would be engaging in if you have decided to be rich. You would be actively looking to bring in and hire and work with professional financial advisors, including tax and wealth management, investments, if those aren't the same person, perhaps attorneys, whatever is the appropriate advisor. For you business owners, absolutely a good bookkeeper. You know, these are things you don't scrimp on. You don't look to get discount financial advice if you've decided to be rich. Why? Because you're going to be rich. You need the best. Okay. So it's mindset. The first step is get your mindset right. Decide that in the area of money, you are pursuing financial freedom. The second is about your vocabulary. It is speak. What are you saying to yourself and other people about money? What are the things that you say on a daily basis? And frankly, until you've begun your wealth journey, which is intended where where you will take on the intention to transform yourself, enlighten yourself in the area of money. Most of us don't talk to anyone about money. Like you have some internal conversation about money. Occasionally you negotiate for price or wage in the area where you're earning. And like, maybe you talk to your partner, but for most people, we have contentious conversations with our romantic partner about money, right? So this area is the most broken for most people. What are you saying about money? And, you know, I teach specific empowered things to start saying about money. If you don't know where to start, we'll talk about that more in this season on Profit Boss Radio. But of course, there are past episodes you can go research. The third step in the seven step money blueprint is plan. You need a plan for money. We need to know how much are you spending to live a life that you love? What is your retirement or financial independence number that it's going to take for you to achieve that number? And then we need to reverse engineer your success through a consistent savings rate. Sounds boring, but it is absolutely effective. It is 100% effective if you do it right. You know, tightening the belt is never like, woo, she tightened her belt. She stopped spending money. (laughs) I've never seen anyone celebrate that on Instagram. However, it is the way. The fourth step to wealth is earn. This is the one everyone likes to talk about. This is the one that's exciting. This is the one people feel raises the roof. This is the one that implicitly gives you freedom. However, if you earn it and spend it all, you've earned no freedom. So being a high earner, is just one of the seven steps to wealth. The fifth step is save. Save goes back to that third step, which is plan. You know, I kind of, I'm addicted to saving money. I love saving money. I have auto transfers to a lot of savings accounts happening at at all times. I actually enjoy saving it more than I enjoy spending it, which is a complete reversal from the way that it was. I couldn't, in the past, I couldn't fathom saving money. I always told myself, I'll save it next year. I'll save it when I get a raise. I'll save it when I'm in my thirties. So saving money. And we have talked and will talk more about 
the technical ways that business owners need to save their money. There's specific accounts that you need to have at specific times. It's pretty complicated in the U.S. What kind of accounts you need to be saving in, whether that's a simple IRA, a SEP IRA, a solo 401k, or a traditional 401k. And at this point in my business, I have and offer a traditional 401k with matching to my employees, but it wasn't always that way. I've had versions of all of the accounts that I just mentioned to you, and those accounts were appropriate for my business at that time. So the point is to get the right account for you. The sixth step is invest. You absolutely must invest. I highly recommend low-cost, passively constructed, index-type mutual funds. A mutual fund is a collection of stocks. And it is just absolutely the best way to take your pro rata share of all the profits being earned by the highly competitive and ambitious CEOs of publicly traded companies around the world. I know the stock market can be a very intimidating conversation for people, but once you know how to play in the stock market, and I do relate to it like playing, and that's not to say I don't take it seriously because I follow very strict rules. I have an investment philosophy that's, I want to say, at play that's running and working in my accounts and my client accounts and has been for years. But it does occur like a game for me in terms of it's just fun because I'm not intimidated by it anymore. And I can teach and share that with you too. The stock market is really the only way, one of the only ways on the planet to earn truly passive income. I don't know why more people don't talk about it that way. I guess it's not exciting if you didn't build it with your blood, sweat and tears yourself. But you know, it's a pretty great way to earn profits. It's one of the greatest generators of individual wealth in human history. Absolutely. More so than any of the other popular things you hear people talk about, which I do get into specifically on this show. And the seventh step of my seven step money blueprint is protect. Once you've built it, you have to protect it like a castle. You would build a moat around it and pull up that drawbridge. Once it's yours, it's yours. Don't let it go into the world. Don't make mistakes. So this includes some behaviors like avoiding lawsuits, doing things to not piss people off in your business, right? Like taking the high road, not getting into contentious situations with people. Also having the right insurance, including insurance for your business, insurance for your personal life and sufficient assurance. Again, this is something you don't scrimp on, but also don't do dumb stuff with your money. (laughs) Once it's yours, take it off the table. Don't give other people access to it. We all have heard stories of someone who's built up a fortune and then lost it. I don't want that to be you. Okay. So those are the seven steps to wealth. I want to talk with you about one last thing that's been on my mind. It's been in the news and then we're going to wrap up today's episode, but... I want to talk with you about the Forbes billionaires list. So I don't know if it's just my demographic data on the socials, but man, have they been pushing these articles about the Forbes billionaires list to me. And it's just like, I don't know. It's a little voyeuristic to me, but I want to point something out to you. So in no particular order, Kate Wang, who's the CEO of the Chinese vaping company called RLX, is a massive billionaire. Jeff Bezos, who recently announced the third quarter of this year, he'll step down as CEO of Amazon. It's big news that Kim Kardashian is now a billionaire. And Whitney Wolf Hurd, the founder of Bumble, is a billionaire. Altogether, Forbes is listing 2,755 billionaires. It's not a complete list, okay? Because I happen to personally know two billionaires who are not listed there. But of course... I don't know Forbes' methodology, but I promise you Kim Kardashian is not sending her personal financial statements to Forbes. So they are estimating at best. So it can't be 100% accurate. Again, I also sort of think it's like voyeuristic. Like, why do we really care? But the point is, this can be a perfect opportunity to take stock of your own relationship to money. Because if you resent wealthy people, you won't become one of them. So let's take this as a learning opportunity, sort of like an MRI, which lets you see what's inside your body that you can't see from the outside so that you can work with your doctor to fix your internal injuries. Let's take this as a money mindset MRI so we can see what's at work in your financial life. So you can go to work to fix what's limiting you financially. And you know, I get that being a billionaire is probably out of reach for most of 
us, but that's not really the point because right now, even being financially healthy is out of reach for most people. So what's your reaction when you see the Forbes billionaires list? Do you envy them? Do you put them on a pedestal? Do you celebrate them? Do you resent them? Do you feel wronged? Like it shouldn't be possible for some to have so much while others have so little. You know, in this case, your negative emotions and thoughts about this can serve as a diagnosis of sorts. I would say the healthy, empowered, matter of fact reaction ought to be, well, that's a remarkable feat. If they can get to a billion, I can certainly get to 3 million, right? Or whatever your number is, like 3 million is three, it's not 3%, it's 0.03% of a billion. Like let anchoring bias work for you. And that any other emotional reaction to that, you could see as an indicator of financial dysfunction. And that should empower you because if you pull that thread and really unwind that ball of string, you know, you'll get to the core of what are the money mindsets, the limiting beliefs that are holding you back. All right. We are going to now wrap up this episode of Profit Boss Radio. Again, I am so excited to be speaking with you again. We have some amazing guests and episodes scheduled up for you. I'll be talking more about investing and Bitcoin. I'll talk more about the economy and what's happening there. We'll be answering your questions. Let's connect on Instagram. Find me at hillary.hendershot. You can feel free to DM me your financial questions. I'll do my best to answer them here on this show. And I would love to connect with you there. If you liked this episode and appreciate Profit Boss Radio, please do leave us a five-star review on iTunes. I would just love and appreciate that. And we will see you next week. As we wrap things up here for today, I need to review with you the things I have to disclose as a fiduciary financial advisor offering wealth management services through my firm, Hendershot Wealth Management, LLC. You should know that the opinions I express on Profit Boss Radio are my own and they can change. The content I provide in the show is for general education. It's not intended as specific investment advice, nor do I recommend any specific financial products. Unlike how I roll at home with my husband, I can't guarantee that my statements, opinions, or forecasts are always 100% right. Of course, I wish I could peek into that proverbial crystal ball, but so far, I haven't found it. Past performance is not indicative of future results. I talk a lot about indexes, and I want you to know you can't actually buy an index because, of course, when you take a list of companies and create a product that allows people to invest in those companies, there are fees and expenses involved that reduce returns. Remember, all investing involves risk, which as you know, means you could lose your money. And I have to tell you that there is no guarantee that any investment plan or strategy will be successful. And that should keep my lawyers happy. Have a great day.